Well, hello C++ programmers. Brian Malloy here. And this video is going to be a brief little introduction to C++ um, basic language constructs. And, and what I'm really going to look at are mostly uh, C constructs that kind of translate to C++ as well as uh, C++ constructs. So here I have a basic little hello world program okay and I'm gonna extend this in a little bit but it's a basic uh, hello world program so what am I I'm including the IO stream um, I have a function main that returns an int I print hello world and I return zero back to the OS so the next thing I need to do let me just clear this window here the next thing I need to do is compile it now I actually have a make file here but rather than talk about make files I'm just gonna compile it so one way to compile it would be to use the GNU uh, compiler co uh, collection suite G++ so let me do that and then I type a dot out and I get hello world so we expected that if you look at it we see that um, let me try another compiler, Clang++, that I like better. Same outcome, though, of course. You might be saying, well, who cares? Why don't I use G++? Well, you can. One of the things I like about Clang is that the error messages are infinitely better. And as I produce more of these videos, I'll show you that. So some of the advantages of using Clang. One of the disadvantages of using Clang is that Clang does not respect the Scott Myers flags, and I'll talk about that as we go along. Okay, so we've seen we've used two different compilers, one that I prefer over the others, um, and it doesn't matter. So anyway, let me get rid of this return zero because we don't need it. So what do I want to talk about here? Well, let me just expand a bit on this hello world. So what I'm doing here is I'm including IO stream. What that simply means is that that brings a namespace called STD uh, or IO stream that's in STD into my the scope of my program. So what I'm doing here, I have to tell uh, the C++ compiler that I'm going to be using C out and that it's in this namespace called STD. And I'm going to be using EN, this ENDL construct, which is in namespace STD. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me just see if I can expand on that. So let's create a namespace. Let's have a namespace MySpace. Okay, and in here I'll put an X, and I'll give it the value 99, and that's my namespace. Okay, so there's a namespace. How do I get at that, that namespace? Well, it's easy. I'll just put, I'm going to get rid of hello world. We're, we're tired of hello world. And I'll put uh, my space colon colon x. And let's go ahead and uh, let me move this out of the way. I'll uh, compile this. I'll compile it with clang plus plus. And we, then we'll run it and we see we get 99. Okay, so there is, uh, I'm using the namespace. All right, so this namespace right here. Now, one of the things I could do is just say um, using uh, namespace my space. And then I don't need to do this. Okay, now, now that works. Let me just try it. So let's go ahead and clang it and a dot out it and we get what we thought we'd get. However, this is the exact worst thing to do. This is ridiculous, because what could I do? I could actually say, well, int, I'm sorry, int x equals uh, 7, and now, whoops, did I, let me see, did that work? Yeah, I did work. So let me get this out of the way and try compiling it. So if I try compiling it, we have an error, a clash, because our, my reference to x is ambiguous. What, what do I mean by that? Well, I have an x in the global namespace, and I, the anonymous global namespace, and I have an x in my space, and I can even have an x here. Okay, I can say int x equals zero. And basically, I could get all three of them, except I'm so lazy that I put this global using namespace. Let's do things right and get rid of that. Okay, so let's say, see, let, let's see if we can print all three of these x's. So we've got global x, that is this x that it has the value seven in the anonymous global namespace, <coughs> excuse me, 
I have this x that equals 99 in my space, namespace, and I have this local x. Is it possible to do all three? Yes, if I'm not lazy and put using namespace my space and pollute the whole namespace. So how can I do that? Well, I can say, well, first of all, I want the global namespace. Well, it's anonymous. It doesn't have a name, so I'll do that. Now I'll get the one in my space. And then finally, I'll get the one that's local. Okay? So what's my output going to be? Well, this will be the glo anonymous uh, global namespace, so I'm going to get 7. This will be 99, and this one will be the local one right there. Let's see if this is going to work. So let me clear this up. Let me do clang plus plus main dot slash a dot out, and there you see it, 7990. We got all three values. A, because we weren't lazy. B, because we specifically specified the namespace that we wanted. Okay, so uh, this says, so actually, let me just say that colon colon is the scope operator. What do I mean by a scope operator? Well, it show, shows you the scope that this x is in. This x is scoped in a namespace. What's the name of that namespace? I don't know. It's anonymous, so we put nothing there. Colon colon x, the anonymous global namespace. My space colon colon x, that's this one. So we're going to get so for this one, we'll get 7, for this one, we'll get 99, and for this one, we'll get the local 1x. All three accessible. So that's namespaces. And what I'm doing here, this C out, is I'm prefix, prefixing it with the standard namespace that comes, uh, that the IO stream is, is contained in. So when I bring in IO stream, I'm actually bringing in the STD namespace and C out is in S the namespace called STD. So what is up there is something that, what is in here is something that looks like this. Namespace STD, I'm sorry. Uh, and then in there is IO stream. Okay, I don't want to put it in there, but I'm just trying to show you how namespaces work. Okay, so that's namespaces. I'm showing you the proper way to use C out. We're going to do it by prefixing it with the namespace name, and we'll know exactly where this C out is. Not important so much here because we only have IO stream, but it'll be important later. Okay, so let's get rid of this and, and talk about a few other things. So now we know what namespaces are. Um, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about integer division. Okay, so if I have an int, an int x equals 7, I'm sorry, that should be a semicolon, I say print x slash 2, what will I get? Well, the answer is going to be 3, not 3.5. Why? Because this is an integer. When I divide two integers, I get an integer. 7 divided by 2, you're going to say is 3.5. But we truncate it to be an integer, and we get uh, 3. So when I compile this, I'm trying to compile it. And then I'll run it. I'll get three. So there it is, three. Integer division. Okay, finally, uh, for a couple of other ones now, let's come in here and talk about the ternary operator. Why do we want to talk about a ternary operator? Well, ternary operators are awfully useful in video games, and we're going to be talking about how to build a video game later. So what is the ternary operator? It's colon. I'm sorry, it's question mark colon. What, what do I mean by ternary operator? Well, this slash here is a binary operator. Why is it binary? Because it takes two operands. What are the operands? X and 2. So this front slash here is the division operator. And the division operator is binary. It takes um, two operands. X is the first operand. 2 is the other operand. I could have a unary operator. So I could say this. So. So here I have a, uh, on line 5, I have a binary operator, division, and on line 6, I have a unary operator, minus, and the next thing I want to do is show you a ternary operator. What does a ternary operator mean? It has two operators, uh, oper I'm sorry, uh, here I have a little uh, uh, Linux thing about, anyway, let's skip that. Okay, so, uh, um, so this is a binary operator because it takes two operands. This is a unary, oper unary operator because it takes one operand. Let's have a ternary operator. So let's say x mod 2. I'm going to put question mark 
Uh, let's see. So question, what let's see. If 2 mod 2 is true. So first comes the true. If 2 mod 2 is true, I'm going to, I'm going to say, oh, what do I want to do? Uh, I'm trying to do something meaningful here. Uh, 2 mod 2 is going to be either 0 or 1. So if it's 1, it's true. So I'll make it be 7. Otherwise, I'll make it be 8. Is that dumb? Is that going to be dumb? Okay, so what am I, what's going to happen here? X is 7. 7 mod 2 has a, rem, so mod returns the remainder after division. So 7 divided by 2, 2 goes into 7 three times with one remainder. 1 is true, so I'm going to get 7 as my output. So is that confusing enough? Oh boy. Okay, so what's my output going to be? 3 from here, minus 7 here, and my output here is going to be plus 7. Let's see if I'm right. So let me get rid of this. Let me say clang plus plus main. Then I say a dot out and I get 3 minus 3, 7. So I think you see where we get the 3. I think you see where we get the minus 7. I think you're scratching your head about why do we get 7. Why? Okay, let's see. So my ternary operator. My ternary, op ternary operator is question mark colon. Okay, and it takes three operands, count them, one, two, three operands. Now, how does this work? If the first operand is true, we return the second operand. If the first operand is false, we return the third operand. Now, what do I mean by true, false? Well, in C and C++, zero is false, everything else is true. Okay, everything else is true. So, x mod 2. Since this is a 7, 7 mod 2 is 1. 1 is true, so I get 7. Okay, so my result from this is going to be a 7. If this were, let's make this be a 4. Now, what's the output? Well, 4 mod 2 is 2. That's nice and convenient. <laughs> Minus 4 right here. And 4 mod 2 is 0. 0 evaluates to false here, so I get 8. So my output is 2 minus 4, 8. Do you believe it? Let's uh, save this, and let's try it, and let's compile it, and then we'll run it. 2 minus 4, 8. Does that make any sense to you? So that's the ternary operator. Real useful for video games because, you know, you can... Um, oh, we can we can come up with distances and mod by the size of the screen and wrap around and do all kinds of things. Okay, so that's uh, integer division, ternary operator, and now I want to talk about parameter transmission. Okay, so let me get rid of this, let me get rid of this, and let me write a function. <clears throat> what are the parameter transmission modes? Well, let's just write them. So the parameter transmission modes are value, reference, and const ref. All right, let's see if we can get all three in here. So how do we get all three? Well, I'm going to write a function. So I'm going to have a void function f that takes an int n, okay? And it's going to say, oh, pl um, n, let me say n equals n plus 1, just to put something dumb. And let me go ahead and copy that, 4yyp, so that's f. And I'm going to make this be G, and I'm going to pass this one by reference. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call um, F passing X, and I'll print now X, and I'll do this twice. I'm going to do it twice. This time I'm going to call it with G. Okay, and you know what? Just to keep things clear, I'm going to set X back to four here. Okay, so what happens? So I say x equals four. I call f passing in four, but it's by value. Value means a local copy. So really, when you pass by value, you're using a four-letter word copy. So this is a four-letter word copy. So I get a local copy of it, and I'm going to change it. If I print it out here, I'll get a five, but if I print it out here, I get a four because it only changes the local copy. <clears throat> So I changed it back just to show you that it's going to be 4 again. Now I call G, only this ampersand means I pass by reference. So what does that mean, pass by reference? Well, really pass the address of this parameter. So when I come up here and I change N, I actually change this, this 
actual parameter, so that becomes a 5, and here I get 5. So I get 4 and 5 are going to be my output. Let's see if I'm right. Let's compile this. There I compiled it, dot slash a dot out, 4 and 5. You see it? Okay, so we got 4 here because f doesn't change it. It changes the local value. Here I get a 5 because I pass that one by reference. Okay, now what's this third one, const ref? <clears throat> Const ref refers to a function. So I'm, I'm sorry, it really is used with classes. So let's just write a simple class. So class A, nothing in it. Okay, so there's class A. All right. And I'm going to FGH. Let's have an H. One, two, let's do four Y, Y, P. And this is going to be uh, an H. And I'm going to pass that. I'm going to pass by const ref uh, a. And that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> that's not too interesting, is it? So, um, I don't know. I'm doing my best here. So, uh, let's get rid of that and that. FG, we're going to get 5 here. We agree with that. Now, let's call. Uh, did I screw up? There's 8. Oh, wait, let me just see. Can you see here? Let me, let, me, let me try to make this so that you can see everything on here. You know what? Yeah, this will work. Okay, so now I'm going to call, I'm going to call G passing, oh, i got to create an instance of A. So A, and now I want to pass H, call H passing that. I don't know. Is that helpful to you? Okay, so I'm going to pass it by const ref. Well, let me go ahead and save this. Let me compile it, and it's mad at me. It hates me. Error, unknown type name A on line 11. Const, let's see what I did wrong. Okay, on line 11, it doesn't know what an A is. Well, of course it doesn't know what an A is because A is down here and H is up there. So let's move A up here so it can see it. Okay, so now H now sees there's an A here. Where's A? It's going to look from here back. There's A. Now it finds it. And I don't know how interesting this is, but let's compile it. It compiles it. Let's run it. We only get five. Okay, so I've tried to show you the two, I'm sorry, the three parameter transmission modes. Value, reference, and const ref. That doesn't make too much sense here, does it? Why pass by const ref? Const ref is an efficiency consideration because what I could do is just pass it I could get the same thing by passing by value, okay? And essentially, what I'm going to say is, I'm not going to change this parameter. Why? Because it's passed by value, and I'm changing a local copy. But I don't want to do that, because then I'll call a copy constructor. Because remember, when you pass by value, you make a local copy. To make that local copy, you call a copy constructor. Now, I might be getting ahead of myself, because I haven't talked about constructors, and that's in the next video. But I just wanted to introduce you to those three parameter transmission modes, value, reference, and const ref. We'll expand lots more on const ref in a little bit. So what have I talked about? namespaces. The proper way to use namespaces. So I include what I want to include, and then I prefix anything by the namespace name so that I know exactly where CL came. It came from STD, and I know exactly where END and ENDL came. It, from, it came from S, e, uh, STD. I showed you integer division. We reviewed the ternary operator, which takes three operands, and then we talked about parameter transmission modes. We also talked about two uh, different compilers. So just a little introduction to some of the basic language constructs in C++, and we'll be talking more about these as we uh, move forward. So Brian Malloy, happy programming over and out.